Welcome to another Science Summer Safari Family and Teacher Expedition, Brookville Fossils. Wow, it's sure taken us a long time to get here to Fairfield Causeway, which leads right into the Brookville Reservoir. Some of us may have gotten lost along the way. <laughs> so once you're here, it's gonna be hot. You're gonna need a hat. There's sweat bees, but they don't usually hurt you until you swat them. So you might wanna put some bug spray on. I don't know, long pants, shorts, it's up to you. But the rocks are sharp. Follow the safety rules and you're here for a fun day. The hill I'm sitting on has rocks that are from the Ordovician period. Now the Ordovician period is found here in Indiana and all the way across the ocean in Wales. In fact, that's where it got its name by a geologist in the 1800s who named it for an ancient Welsh tribe called the Ordovice. And so the Ordovician is a very old period of rocks. In fact, almost 500 million years old. And you can find beautiful sea creatures here. The Ordovician is also known for one of the highest levels of rocks. These same period and these same rocks are found on top of Mount Everest. So this is evidence of plate tectonics. And this is a picture from the Indiana State Museum by an artist by the name of Karen Carr. And this shows you what the ocean may have looked like when these creatures were living. Now we're just gonna find the fossil remains, the preserved evidence of past life. But you might see part of a cephalopod or horned coral or trilobites or bryozoan or even some worms here or brachiopods. In fact, my favorite, the brachiopods. So you're here at the Ordovician as you came from Indianapolis, that 90 mile trip, almost every mile was four million miles back in time to get to 450 million years ago when Indiana was connected to Pangaea and it was an ocean, a shallow ocean rich with life. Most of these fossils are extinct, but it's a great opportunity for you to collect them. And if you collect a brachiopod from here and go to the museums around the world, like at the Smithsonian or the Chicago Field Museum, you will find the very same brachiopods collected from the Ordovician. Good luck. So once you're here, there's a couple safety rules to think about. Number one, we never get on the road. Once you park here, don't get on the road. Don't cross the other side of the road. The fossils here are much better. Number two, when you go up the hill like Mary is, keep your belly to the hill. Find a good place to dig or look and set your bucket flat. Look what happens if you don't set your bucket flat. Your bucket's catching them in. Sorry, Rick. That's a problem. In fact, anytime a rock rolls down. They're very sharp. We've had people get hurt by rolling rocks. So if a rock does start to fall, what are you supposed to holler, Mary? Watch out below! Yeah, rock! <laughs> rock! And that means, okay, now it's time to come down from the hill. And every kid I know wants to go to the very top. So you want to stand up, turn around backwards, and instead of coming straight down, it's better if you do a little zigzag back and forth. Take your time. If you notice, Mary is keeping her belly to the wall. You don't want to turn around and walk down because you'll get going fast. And if you fall, you're going to leave your own blood on these rocks. So nobody wants that. So what you see here is a collection of what you might find on the hill I'm sitting on. Ordovician fossils. And there's gastropods and plesiopods and brain coral and, and a whole variety of different species. Good luck. Keep your eyes out for horned corals. All you're gonna find is the base. It kind of looks like an empty ice cream cone. The soft parts are not preserved. You also will find these small to a couple inches long, and some of them are actually inside of the rock, so you might want to take the entire rock home. Horn corals. Small little crinoids. They look like little round beads stacked together. It's actually our state fossil. One of the species called Cyanthrochronides multibrachiatus. It's a pretty fancy name for a crinoid for crying out loud. Now this is a funny name, Bryozoa, which means moss-covered animal. To me, they look like small little trees, little dots on them, or, or antlers from a reindeer. Uh, Bryozoan is something you'll find either loose, look for the small ones, or covering a rock, brachiopod. A brachiopod, you might think is a seashell, it's like a two little shells that came together. This place is famous for brachiopods. There's probably 10 different species of them. And these brachiopods are also found in museums around the world. Make sure you look for them both 
large and small. In fact, have a contest. Who can find the very smallest brachiopods? Because they start out small and get larger. Look for trilobites. They're very rare, but you might find one or part of a trilobite. Tri, it means three, three lobes. And the ones that come from here, you might find some fragments of one of the largest trilobites that lived called the Isotelus gigas, or you might find this little rolled up guy called the Flexicalamini miki. Trilobites, a rare find. Now this one is also kind of rare. This is called the Plesiopod. The, Plesios, the Plesiopod looks like a, a seashell, but it's not even. It's kind of twisted around one side right here. So it looks like a clam shell that's twisted. Keep your eye out for Plesiopods. Now the word gastropod, very interesting. Gastro means stomach, pod means foot. Gastropod, it's a snail. Now look for the gray ones. You might find some white ones. Those are modern snails that have died here and you're looking for the fossil gastropods. And a fossil is preserved evidence of past life. Gastropod, cephalopod. Cephala means head, head on foot. Pod means foot. Now the cephalopod is kind of like a, a, a modern squid as in the cephalopod family. But this ancient cephalopod was one of the largest creatures in the Ordovician and it was long like a cone. You might find this section of its body. None of the soft parts are preserved, but you might get lucky and find a section of a cephalopod. So one thing that I get when I bring students here is they say, I can't find any fossils, but actually this entire hill is made of brachiopods. You cannot pick up a rock without finding fossils in it. So they may not be loose, but this is filled with brachiopods. In fact, you could take home one rock like this and spend hours trying to identify all the brachiopods in here. And if you take a look over here, all of these rocks on the ground here are broken pieces of brachiopods. And there might be some loose ones, which you're interested in, but I guarantee you every rock you pick up has a brachiopod in it. So all the times we come here, there's always those that just want to hammer away at the rocks. That's okay, have fun with it. But the most important thing is make sure before you start hammering that one, you have your goggles. Get those out of your kit and on. You really need to keep your eyes safe. So my goggles are on, I've got my hammer ready, and I'm ready, but no, I can't go yet. I also have to make a check around, make sure that no one else is around me. If everything's, hey, Rick, I'm getting ready to hammer here. You need to go that way. Uh, what if I have goggles? Uh, if you have goggles, you can get down and you can be here, but you got to have your goggles okay. on. Let me take this coral. I'm out of here. Now that the area is safe, I can begin having fun and really getting to hammer away. This is one of my favorite spots to find. Right behind me is a water seep, and as the water comes down, it moistens and makes mud, but it also makes the fossils a little bit browner so they stand out in contrast. I also like to look for a little mud bank right here. So this mud bank, and I know it's a mud bank because all the fossils are up on little pedestals. So a hard rock gets stuck up here when the rains come and washes away the soil, the fossiliferous soil, it's waiting for me to find. So if you take a look closely right here, bryozoan like crazy. There's bryozoan everywhere and little bitty baby brachiopods, brachiopods, crinoids. In fact, I might find the smallest brachiopod ever. And there, there's, it's filled with beautiful little fossils for you to pick up, put in your pocket, or put in your containers to take home and study. Bryozoan, brachiopod. Oh, there's a crinoid. Check out this beautiful collection. So after you've spent some time finding all the little fossils and different unique things you find along the way, one of the things we always suggest is take a big piece home. This way at home, you can continue your studies of fossils. Who knows what'll be inside? You can see just here that it's absolutely covered with the brachiopods. Find one that you like and put it on and take it home and study away. So let's take a look at what I found today. So here's a horned coral right here. I also found a smaller one and uh, a real small one, three horn corals, four horn corals. Uh, I found a plesiopod, that beautiful like a clam. I have found all kind of brachiopods, <laughs> beautiful brachiopods, different species. Here's some bryozoa that looks like little 
trees with little dots on them. And uh, there's some crinoids. There's a, the crinoids here are pretty small. There's a crinoid right there. And now if you find these pieces, check these out. These are from a trilobite called Isotelus, about 10 inches in length. And these are some of the, the sheddings of the trilobite. And so the, all these I've just found just today. Use your guide to identify them, another horned coral. Oh, here's one though. I gotta show you this one up close. Take a look at this. And I wanna do something called, uh, well, it's called a field wash. Ready? Check it out. Ah, look at the detail now that you field washed it. Now you don't have to field wash it, but it, it's kind of cool. Paleontologists do it all the time. Once you're finished collecting fossils here at the site, there are some other points of interest that you might want to check out. If you go down the causeway, there is a beautiful reservoir. And further on, the small town of Metamora. But we're going to stop at the reservoir just to show you how this lake was made. So let's take a look at what we've done today. We started here near the Fairfield Marina at the causeway and we collected fossils. Then when it went across the causeway all the way over to 101. We've gone south and we're all the way down here now at the dam. So it was pretty windy on this day. As you can see, I'm at the top of the Brookville Reservoir built by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. You can see the city of Brookville and behind me you can see the lake. And it was really windy on this day. You know, So we're up here. When you come, make sure you check it out and take a walk. Now behind me is the spillway in case this lake gets too tall and the water will go all the way behind it. But why are these very old rocks right here? Well, it's because of the Cincinnati arch that pushed up all the surrounding layers. And if you remember layers, the old layers are at the bottom and the new layers are at the top. So when they were pushed up by the Cincinnati arch, Along came the glaciers and pushed them down, leaving these very old Ordovician rocks right here for us to explore. But it's so windy, you know, besides the lake, I brought this cool airplane. Now, you can buy this at any local box store for $9.99, and it's a lot of fun, even on a windy day like this. So we're at the top of the Brookville Dam, and Rick is going to put his aviation skills to the test. It's a little windy today, so he had to go down quite a ways. Now, when you go down this hill, if you run, you will fall. Also, be careful. We always lose a few cell phones and a few cameras along the way, so make sure they're tightly secured as you're going down the hill, and use the zigzag method. When you do get to the bottom, it does get a little slippery, but just be careful as you're crossing. Rick, we're just going to put his aviation skills and show this how this plane flies. Now we've come down here where there's some picnic areas, some playgrounds, a bathroom, because we're going to go see the conduit, the area that the cold water from the bottom of the reservoir shoots through and feeds this river. Now, since it's cold and highly oxygenated, it's the only place in Indiana where you can fish for trout. Let's go check it out. This is a great way to end your day, watching the river come through the conduit. Just be careful though, any places that's wet, 
it's going to be a little bit slippery. Sit back, relax, watch a couple anglers fishing, see what they catch. Or stop in Metamora, or maybe the historic Whitewater Canal. It's all on the way home.